What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast. We're talking about the latest and greatest of cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers. Those people of color have made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Times. What's up? What's up? What's going on? And Daniel Acevedo. How's it going, guys? What's going on? So, unfortunately, Chris was unable to make it this week, uh, but he should be back next week or some combination of us, right? You've got plenty of hosts, so we'll make it happen. So my apologies up front. I sound kind of congested because I am. So, it, you know, the show must go on, right? Definitely continue to hit us up throughout the week. So Monday, Tuesday, our topics, Wednesday, discussion. Thursdays, Ask the CISSP. I have one with Kenneth Ellington uh, that we just did. So I hopefully we'll have that one done either this week or next week. Uh, but tune into all the previous ones. We have, like, really good ones with Dr. Uh, Eric uh, Hollis. We have uh, uh, Dr. Joseph J. Burt Miller. There's a lot of J's in there from uh, the, the Cyber Coffee Hour, as well as Alfredo Nash. So that's a really good crossover. And then uh, Dr. T, so Dr. Teresa uh, Vasquez. So she is repped in tech, and then we're also on that platform. So definitely check out all that good stuff. Um, with all that being said, I give it to Shannon. All right, everybody. So this article actually comes from InfoSecurityMagazine.com, and it is by, let me get down here, Beth Mondrill. And the discussion for this week is inequity challenges women in digital trust, so progress is being made, right? So this is what we like to see, right? So like if, if progress is being made when it comes to women getting into the digital trust industry, like it, it could be made across the board for everything else, right? Like that's the purpose of the podcast is to highlight people of color who have, who have gone on to that other side, right? That have crossed, crossed over and trying to get into that. What was it? 7% in the C-suite or something like that was, was a number. What's the most recent number? Yeah, wo woefully low. Woefully, yeah. woefully yeah. low. So, but the study they have revealed that, uh, there, there are women out there who are getting better, right, when it comes to terms of career progression, right? Because that's one of the things they were talking about is women being a little stilted in the, in the, in the, uh, in the industry. And so when it comes to uh, career progression, men and women are, are, are found to be satisfied, satisfied, right? So for the men, they say 72% are satisfied. Women, 68% are satisfied, right? But, um, but when it came to like getting a raise and getting promotion in the last two years, they found that women were actually slightly more likely than men to have had a raise in the promotion in the last two years, which is a good sign, right? We're making progress, nice. right? Yeah. Yes. So for women, it was 73% were more likely than men, which was 71% to have had a raise or promotion in the last two years. So this is what we like to see, right? So to see it when it comes to the, to the realm of, of the sexes and getting more equality in that, like I like to see that and I'd like to see it turn around to where it'd be with the races as well, right? Because we all know, uh, like I, it, for me at least, I'd like to see it represent the the proportion of whatever the the population is, right? So, like in right. the last in the last census, when it came to uh, black people in America, it was sixteen percent. It's up to sixteen percent, right? So, at least close to that. I'd like to see that, you know, out there. But yeah, this is this was a good study they did. It was a good good survey they did there, where they were talking to the the different races between men and or different excuse me, sexes, men and women, to determine who was satisfied. There's still some work to be done, right? Like there's still yeah some stuff there that needs to happen. But like we would like. It's not just when it comes to like uh when it when it comes to the cyber world or IT world where there's inequality when it comes to women being paid right. and promoted, right? That's a that's across the board, right? So it's good to see the progress. But Daniel, what's your thoughts on this? No, definitely. I mean, I'm a dad daughter or a girl dad. I don't know what the phrase girl is. Dad, yeah. Girl dad, yeah. yeah. And uh and you guys know me well enough. I'm I'm crazy in love with my daughter. She's my world. Like like really, really love her to death. So these things kind of creep more into my consciousness now, I think. I mean, I was never, I never saw it as like us versus them or, you know, really inclusive. Our podcast kind of circles around that. But I think now, you know, embracing my minorityism, my Puerto Rican heritage, I miss my island, I love my people. But now the focus does shift over to my daughter a lot. And the where is her place in the world when she's going to be growing up? What are the opportunities for her? And not only just, you know, the bullying stuff, but like, will she have the right opportunities and chances? We look at it, I looked at it more before, uh, you're always kind of like in a bubble, going, going backwards in, in my mind as I'm saying this. So when I was in Puerto Rico, you know, I only thought about what was on my island and then I joined the military and you kind of see the U.S. and there's a lot more and traveled all over the world and now I live here in Japan and kind of like the rights of people and sexes worldwide, I still think there's a big like imbalance especially when you're talking about worldwide and like 
what women are allowed to and not to do in these different countries. And even in here in Japan too, there's a big inequality of like, you know, the pay and the, the ranks and positions for females. It's gotten a lot better over the years compared to what it's before, just like it has in the U.S. But it's good to see associations like ISACA doing these kind of studies, taking the time to talk to both men and women. Demystifying these, this conversation, I feel like is a good thing too, right? Uh, you know, you see a lot of the social media things where they talk about like, hey, what do you do for work? How much do you get paid? I think the more information everybody has, uh, it kind of helps everybody else out to then at the time of trying to get more for yourself and going to your employer, having the information to back it up to know what is a good deal for yourself. So I think the more things like this, it can be done. The more we know where the playing field is and we can better it for both sides or for everybody, actually. But those are, those are my thoughts in a nutshell. Great article. No, definitely. So I think you kind of, you, you kind of uh, foreshadow a little bit what I, what I want to bring up as well. So again, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. You can find us on every platform you can think of when it comes to audio, uh, video, YouTube is our, our primary, but we're also now on Reptin Tech. We're part of their curated content. So check that out. Uh, and now we're on 99.1 FM out there in the uh, Atlanta metro area and uh, Channel 10 uh, with all their local access, public access on uh, their footprint is the Fairfax, D.C. area. So definitely check us out on all the things. Greatly appreciate it. But yeah, I was going to go for pay, trans pay transparency. A lot of men, listen. People will hate to hear that out there in the corporate world, but I think it's absolutely something that, that we should start discussing and trying to push a little bit more. Again, I come from a very biased background, like like you two uh, as well. The military, the patriarchs are out there. We know exactly what you're making based upon rank and uh, time of service. Like it's not, it's completely just demystified. We know exactly what you're making out here in the corporate world. That's not the case. So we find out stuff through leaks and things of that nature. Like Sony had a really big leak that caused issues because. And when you looked at Sony's corporation, you had a lot of executives and huge pay disparities where we be paid like 50 cents, 70 cents on the dollar compared to their male peers and things of that nature. And I think having more pay transparency will definitely shift that. But then you go into, well, that's not American. That's not capitalism. And everybody needs to negotiate and things of that nature, right? Like we're really big on that, that culture of shaking hands and having meetings and fighting for your, uh, your pay and stuff like that. Even I don't like that. Like when, when it comes time to discuss pay and things of that nature and the interview process, I feel very uncomfortable because again, I've half my life I spent in the military. I know exactly how much I should be paid based upon seniority and rank. Now I'm out here and I'm just like, blah, cause you don't want to go over because you don't want to go under. And it's just, it's a, it's very turbulent. I don't believe it should be necessary. And I, I can feel for, uh, people who are going through that especially for for women so you see me in the pink shirt so uh, this is because i attended the women in defense greater chapter panel a couple of days ago so depending on when you listen to this it, it was in october so it's breast cancer awareness month they asked to wear wear pink i got a pink polo I got my kanye 2000 fit going on i can only wear this twice a year it's it's either a breast cancer awareness month or Easter. And that's the type of pink it is. But attending the panel, man, it was it was refreshing to be in a, a room full of women in uh and powerful positions, right? I'm talking to CEOs, uh, directors, executives, like there's a room full of women who are in those higher positions and men as well, right? There's a few men in there. But it was disproportionate to what you normally see. Normally it'd be a room full of men with a, a handful of women. In this in this case it was the roles were flipped. And I greatly appreciated that. So it's good to see that they have avenues and, and venues like that to support themselves. But it's also great to see that there are a lot more women in these positions because uh, I think it's just beneficial to companies in that regard. Because, again, this platform, we talk about um, how, uh, you know, diversity in thought, diversity in culture, diversity in ethnicity, like all those things help to bolster cybersecurity because you're able to see things from different perspectives. The same thing comes to, to business. So, uh, like, why not? Why would you want to have more women within your corporation who are in these positions that could give you a, a different perspective and then grow your business uh, in that regard? Because it, it's just certain things we, we don't see as the, the stereotypical men versus women uh, in some fields. And it's good to see that having that diversity can help to, to bolster business and, and help with growth. So pay them right.
like, you know, give, give them that opportunity just like you would your, your male counterparts. Well, I know, I know in some places they're, they're trying to get better about that. So like uh, here in Colorado, like you'll see job uh, listings that have a pay band, right? Like it'll show in the, in the listing, like, Hey, this is what we are offering, you know, for this position. So like, it's one of those things where, and the band can be broad, depending on the job, right? And how much time you have and things of that nature. It's not saying, oh, you're automatically going to get the top end of that, you know, where somebody is. Yeah. That still is based on your experience, right? You, you know, whether or not you have different qualifications, things of that nature. But it is something that's being worked towards. I'd like to see it more widespread than it is right now, right? Because I'm not going to sit here and say every state does it. I just know here in Colorado, it's something that you're starting to see more of. And it's not across the board. But Another thing to bring up is that we're all girl dads, right? Like, so for me, the thing is my oldest and my youngest, my bookends, right? For my children are, are <laughs> girls, right? So I, I can see it now because my oldest daughter, she is out there in the work, workforce, right? She is, she is an adult. So I can see how things go for her and see how things are going for her. And then I think to myself, I'm like, okay, well, the difference between her and her sister you know, it's several years, you know what I mean? Like, what is it going to be like when my daughter comes up? And I'm hoping mm -hmm. when I see things like this, that it's going to go a better way than what I think it is. Right. And, I, and, and, and mm -hmm. the reason I think it, it, it may not go the way I want it to, not necessarily based off job opportunities, but just the world in general and what we're seeing. Right. There's so many things going on in the world. It's like, what is, what is going to happen to my youngest when she is a young adult, when she's where my oldest is, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, this is, this is a good thing to see, man. Like, the inequity challenges women face are real, you know what I mean, as as it is yes. for race as well, you know. So I'm I'm glad to see it. Um, hopefully it will be something that benefits my youngest when she when she gets to that point if she decides to get some, get into a career field where it is something that is a problem, right? So I want it to be I want it to be equal, equal, right? Like yes, progress is yes. nice, but it being at seventy cents on the dollar for women, like if it's ninety by the time she comes up, I'm like, Hey, it's still work to do, right? You know. Uh. By the time the time she's older, dad probably won't be around too much longer, but you know, still, you know, so like, I need you to go fight this fight, baby. You know what I mean? So. No, definitely. But well, I mean, you could put your conscience in the AI or something like that, right? That future is going to be crazy. It's crazy out there. But, yeah, but then how, but then how will y'all control me? Y'all can't keep the guardrails on the LLMs now. How will y'all control me? If I'm, if, I'm, if I'm running around. If I'm running around like Mr. Burns in The Simpsons, you know what I mean? Like right. in the future episode where he's the head in the jar. Futurama does the same thing when he put the heads right. in the jars. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely continue to tune in throughout the week. So Monday, Tuesday are topics. Wednesday, discussion. Thursdays, ask a CISSP. And then Friday's everything else. Hit us up on all the social medias that go by our name. Give me a Percy. I'm at RYRY Security Guy. That's RYRY Security Guy. You can find me on pretty much everything. But LinkedIn is primary where I respond. And you, Danny, where can they find you? On LinkedIn under my name, Daniel Acevedo. There it is. Stay safe. Stay secure.